What's the first thing you think about when you hear the word Dallas? Terry to Nowitzki, puts up the three, puts it in! Dallas goes up by three! That's right. Dirk Nowitzki of Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> so most of my basketball fans will get that joke. So a couple of weekends ago, I had the opportunity to visit one of my best friends who had recently relocated to Dallas, Texas. And because we're all vaccinated from the COVID-19, all of us got our second shots. I figured it was more comfortable, it was more safe to really go ahead and travel and visit his family. So it was a relatively short weekend and I primarily visited him from Friday, Saturday and basically flew back on Sunday. As I was checking TripAdvisor for some of the activities that we can do while visiting Dallas, I was pleasantly surprised to see that there wasn't really much of anything that we could do aside from like eating actually. So if you want to, if you're really hungry and you like to eat, Dallas is one of the best places to go as far as obviously barbecue. And one of the more interesting things and I swear I was really, really pleasantly surprised is when we landed in Dallas on a Thursday night at 11.55 p.m., I was scrolling through Yelp and trying to see what kind of restaurants or primarily fast foods that are still open. And lo and behold, I find out that they have In-N-Out. Now, someone who is a California native knows what In-N-Out is all about. But for those, <laughs> In-N-Out, that's what a hamburger is all about, right? That's their slogan, anyways. For those of you who have never had In-N-Out Burger, it is by far, by far, one of the best places to get a fast food hamburger. In my opinion, it definitely beats places like Five Guys Burgers, Shake Shack, and pretty much any other type of burger establishment that you could possibly throw at it. And for those of you who have never had In-N-Out before, you definitely, definitely have to try their number one, which is primarily their double-double uh, hamburger sandwich and their french fries. The reason why In-N-Out is one of the best hamburger places that I've ever been to, at least strictly speaking fast food, is the fact that when they cook their meat and the way they apply the cheese and the buns and everything together, you could literally, literally eat the paper. Like it's that good. And so for those of you who are visiting LA or Dallas or any other places that have In-N-Out, you definitely, definitely must get their number one. So as I mentioned earlier, we didn't really do a lot of sightseeing, but we primarily did a lot of eating. And so remember, Dallas is a great, great place to get barbecue, or rather the whole state of Texas in general. So for lunch, or rather brunch, we visited a place called Yardbird. And there are a few locations located in the greater United States, uh, some places such as DC, Vegas, and of course, Dallas. And what they're primarily known for, which unfortunately we were unable to really have, is their brunch. So what we ended up doing instead was having their lunch menu. And the first thing you're gonna notice when you first walk into Yardbird is just the beautiful, beautiful aesthetics. The one thing that I really enjoyed when walking into the front facade is the fact that you are introduced to this beautiful, beautiful bar room. And if you look at the second floor, there is basically a private establishment where people can basically have a, we'll say a small little party, little private event where you get a fantastic, fantastic overview of the entire restaurant while having wine, whiskey, and all these different decorations that are located within your vicinity and within your environment and while having a little private get together with your friends and your family. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the food that Yardbird has to offer. So because of the fact that this is Southern comfort food, what do we have to get? The classic biscuit. And the biscuits was very, very tasteful. Like when you grab the biscuit and you hold it in your hand, apply a little bit of that butter and just take a nice little bite of that biscuit. Mmm, very good. Not too hearty, not too cheesy, not too fatty. It just hits the spot just right. So I would highly recommend anyone who is visiting Yardbird to try some of their appetizers. Now you don't necessarily have to get their classic biscuit uh, appetizer, but they have a lot of other things that may appeal to your taste buds. So now let's talk about some of the main courses that we ordered. Again, because this is Southern comfort food, what do we have to get? They are primarily known for the chicken, waffles, and watermelon. And this is exactly what I ordered because I'm here in Texas, I'm visiting, and this is not something I would normally eat just because I am essentially a health conscientious person, but you know what? I'm on vacation, doesn't matter, right? So I have to say that the fried chicken was fantastic. Like other fried chicken and waffles, this one was not too salty and it was seasoned appropriately and the friedness itself was just 
perfect. Not too crispy, not too soft, just right. Just like Goldilocks, not too hot, not too cold, just perfect. When you take a bite of that meat, it is simply just juicy and you can really, really feel that succulent meat just drip down your throat, down your lips even, and it just tasted really, really good. Now, the waffles definitely had a unique taste to it. It's not your typical waffle where you just apply maple syrup and just you have a waffle. What this waffle had was a mixture of cheddar cheese as well as a combination of friedness, like fried if that's a word, where it does taste like the kitty. The waffle definitely did taste a little bit deep fried, but it was perfect enough where it was nice and crunchy, but also soft on the inside. And to top that all off, you are given a combination of bourbon maple syrup, which is a very, very good combination, I swear. But the one thing that I really didn't like was the watermelon. Now, unfortunately, the watermelon had this like this soury uh, like seasoning to it. Like it was like a salty, sour watermelon. So it wasn't really appealing to my, my taste buds, but so I highly recommend definitely ordering the chicken, waffle, and watermelon if you are planning on visiting the Yardbird. Now, my friend ended up ordering a Nashville Yardbird chicken sandwich. And again, this sandwich was very, very good as well. So if anything, you wanna order chicken in this establishment. And of course, just like any other Southern comfort style of food, the portion sizes are huge. The fact that we ordered the classic biscuit plus the chicken and waffles and watermelon, I could only eat a small portion of my chicken and waffles. So I was unable to really eat all of my chicken and waffles. So of course I just saved it, took it in the box and take it a go, right? So after stopping by Yardbird for lunch, I was really craving something desserty, so something sweet. So what do I find? I find one of the best gelato places that is located in Dallas. So the place we ended up going to was called Bodolino Gelato. And when you go inside, the first thing you're gonna notice is the beautiful, beautiful cakes that are located in the front panel. So when you take a look at their cake, you really just wanna order everything and just try a small little sample. I mean, look at how beautiful and gorgeously decorated most of these cakes are. And so let's go ahead and talk about the gelato. Now, the one nice thing, and I swear I do miss this, is the fact that at least here in Seattle, most of the ice cream shops are still not allowing for free samples. But the beautiful aspect of Bordolino Gelato is the fact that they do give free samples. So I would highly, highly recommend trying out their white coffee, white chocolate coffee, as well as their pistachio uh, gelato. Now they're also known for something called giandula or giandura. Uh, hard for me to really pronounce it, but I didn't really personally find that, but that is one of their also known favorites for uh, for people who come and visit this place. So if you don't really feel like eating some of their gelatos or don't really feel like ordering some of their cakes, you could definitely try and take a look at some of their different sundaes as well as their avogados. So, so definitely come by and visit Bordolino Gelato if you're definitely, definitely craving some very, very good, smooth, silky gelato. So now, you know how I mentioned earlier that there wasn't really much of a sightseeing thing to do? Of course, there's always some things that you can do. Now, unfortunately, the day that we ended up visiting, we were experiencing some rain, actually a lot of rain. But we ended up going to the Ford Center, and according to my friend who currently lives in Dallas now, this is where the Dallas Cowboys actually is their practice facility, basically. So for those of you who are into football, who, who just, basically, if you just like football in general, come by and definitely visit the Ford Center. They have a, a semi-replica of the actual Dallas Cowboys Stadium uh, with an awesome, uh, I, I don't want to really call it the Jumbotron screen. And they also have a lot of shops and establishments that you guys can go ahead and walk around and take a look at. So they obviously have a Dallas Cowboy memorabilia where you can buy shirts, souvenirs, and anything associated with Dallas Cowboys. But they also have some restaurants and just other eateries that you can do while visiting the Ford Center. So definitely come by, uh, check this place out and definitely bring a Nerf football and just have some fun with your friends and family because they actually are 10 yards. But instead of having a 100 yard field football stadium, it's more, we'll say, 60 to 70 yard football field. So definitely a nice place to just come out and throw a football if you got one. So remember, Texas is all about barbecue, right? So where do we go? 
we go to Hutchins Barbecue. I've had smoked barbecue before, but holy crap, I've never had it in a really rather, I've never had it in a Dallas manner. For example, if you go to San Diego, a really good barbecue place that's known in San Diego, San Diego is called Phil's Barbecue. Now, coming to Hutchins Barbecue in Dallas, Texas, it's almost like, so I swear it is double the taste, double the fun, double the flavor, blah, blah, blah. I need to stop doing commercials. Anyways, so the first thing you're gonna notice when you go into Hutchins is that there is a line, <laughs> even with the rain, it didn't really matter because people want their barbecue, but this is a line to basically go ahead and order your food. And once you order your food, you find a nice little table for you to sit down. One of the things that I would highly, highly recommend coming order when you visit Hutchins Barbecue is you have to get their barbecue ribs. This is something that is relatively new for them according to the server, because normally they do serve uh, pork barbecue ribs, but they started having more and more uh, beef barbecue ribs. And holy crap, when you look at the comparison sizes from the pork barbecue ribs up to the beef barbecue ribs, you could definitely see a significant, significant size difference. So what we ended up ordering obviously was the one pound of beef barbecue ribs, the one pound of uh, brisket. So some of the side that we actually ended up ordering was the, uh, the broccoli as well as the mashed potatoes. But I'm here for meat, so I didn't really, honestly, I didn't really eat a lot of the side dishes, but mm, the first thing you're gonna notice when you cut, cut that barbecue, that beef barbecue rib, is just how easily, easily you could cut through. Like you could literally use a butter knife and it just slices right through. Same thing with the brisket fatty, juicy, tender, succulent, and just, I want some more. <laughs> really do want some more. And that, in fact, actually, we did order a little bit more and so that we could take it home here in Seattle. But again, if you really, 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 really want good tasting barbecue, you definitely have to come to Hutchins Barbecue. So again, we were here for about three nights, two days, and on Saturday, I've come to find out that it is my best friend's daughter's birthday. So we spent most of the day just celebrating her birthday in the house. They ended up renting one of those uh, inflatable jumpy houses. And you know, when you're a kid, that used to be such a fun thing. But for me, I did try and do that jumpy house. And I swear, 30 seconds, I'm done. I felt nauseated. That's how you know you're getting old is when you can't even do a jumpy house anymore. <laughs> Anyways, for dinner, I didn't really want to have barbecue again just due to the fact that we had barbecue last night and I swear I am all, I was all meated out already. Remember we had yard burst, had chicken and waffles, had Hutchins, had Texas style barbecue and I just kind of wanted something different. Pleasantly surprised, Dallas actually has a very strong Korean as well as a Chinese community. So we ended up going to a Korean restaurant which is called Matke. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. And what we ended up ordering was this giant size ramen dish, or rather Korean ramen uh, soup dish. And basically, if you've never seen this before, what it essentially looks like is basically they throw this different amounts of ramen noodles in there, sausage, uh, spam, and just different types of vegetables. So we also ended up getting a side of pork belly. And if you've never had Korean food before, one of the nice things about Korean food is the side dishes. So things like the bean sprouts, the obviously kimchi, kimchi is definitely their staple, as well as some like mashed potatoes, not mashed potatoes, some of their potatoes, as well as like the uh, like vinegar cucumber, like a sweet vinegar cucumber. So definitely, definitely good. The broth was actually very, very tasty. When you drink it, you sip it. It's not just like a typical tofu soup. You sip it, it's like a zesty, zesty lime flavored uh, hot spicy soup broth and it definitely hit the spot as far as like I guess me being Asian I didn't want to I, I kind of miss having rice honestly because I just think that's like my staple food I want to have rice and their barbecue or rather not their barbecue but rather their pork belly was definitely 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 very succulent as well now it wasn't as soft it wasn't as tender as let's say when you go to Hutchins barbecue just due to the fact that it wasn't smoked it's obviously probably just grilled and just basically cooked to uh, cook the taste but definitely definitely tasty as well as I would highly recommend those people who are like you know what I am tired of the Texas style barbecue I'm tired I want some Korean food I want some Asian food definitely come by and check out my Kek. and obviously get some alcoholic beverages like soju which is their Korean alcoholic beverage of choice so so anyways guys that's it for my Dallas trip and unfortunately we weren't unable to do a lot of the other outdoor activities that I normally like to showcase in most of my videos but again I primarily came here to visit my friend 
who I haven't seen basically in almost two years. And that's basically the primary reason why I, visit, I went to go visit Dallas. The other stuff was basically secondary and the primary reason was to visit my best friend who I haven't seen in two years. I haven't seen his wife as well as his daughter who is growing up and becoming you know, older and older, right? We're all getting older. And that's what I realize is what is really important in life is good friends, good family, and of course, good food. So, and if you haven't already done so, make sure to get the COVID-19 vaccination. It'll definitely give you a peace of mind knowing that you're gonna reduce your risk of contracting the COVID-19 vaccine because let's face it, we're all sick of this pandemic. We're all sick of this, like just staying at home and just being, you know, encompassed in this wall that we're trapped in. But so if you don't believe in the vaccine, at least you'll have stronger 5G network, right? Because the COVID-19 has 5G, right? <laughs> anyway, that was a little cheesy. Thanks everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed my episode of the Dallas in a day or two. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And I will see you guys in my next video. Take care everybody.